It's a beautiful day outside the cockpit, but the allure of the moving map on your tablet is too much to ignore. Now there are moving map apps for droid tablets. We at Aviation Consumer took a look at our March issue and called out Avolution's Aviation Maps as our top pick. There's a basic moving map with scroll and pinch, just as you would expect from something like an iPad. You can choose from sectionals, terminal area charts, high and low, and route charts. You can also tap on the map and get a quick pop-up of airport information. Tap again and you'll get detailed airport information, and if it's on a tablet, it'll open up in a convenient split screen. You can scroll through to see the different runways. This is also where you'll load individual procedures or approach charts for the airport. Aviation Map Split Screen is one of the smartest we've seen. You can expand or collapse either side as you wish and show the entire information on the entire screen or share it. It also works in a portrait orientation. The weather's pretty smart too. It loads the basic METARs and TAFs you'd expect, as well as NEXRAD, and then other information like radar summary charts, freezing levels, and more. You can also layer NEXRAD on top of the moving map as long as you have an internet connection. XM connectivity is coming. METARs can also be layered on the chart, although they use sort of a non-standard symbology, so it's a little hard to tell at a glance whether it's low IFR or marginal VFR. This may change in a future release. You can layer AirMets and SIGMETs. You can also put winds aloft, downloaded from the internet, on different layers of the chart. Flight planning is done on its own tab where you can tap in individual airports and have them connect. Tapping on an airport will bring you to that part of the map. You can also insert or append waypoints as you want so you can edit your flight plan right on the map. Pretty slick. Aviation Maps also lets you type in your entire route, complete with Victor Airways, and it'll decode it for you. In the air, Aviation Maps will show you your track, your speed, and your altitude, as well as other waypoint information along the bottom of the screen. Note as well the runway extensions, which are optional for your destination airport. Aviation Maps also has some novel features, like this flight pad, where you could record ATIS or ASOS information on the runway in use, and review procedures, such as the departure for your departure airport, or the approach for your destination airport. Any approach chart or destination chart you view will end up in the pull-down menu on the upper left of the screen along with the different chart types. This makes it easy to call up an approach again when it's time to fly it and put it right next to your moving map. At five bucks a month, Aviation Maps is a pretty good deal. You can't get it from Google's Android market, but you can get it directly from their website, www.avolution.com. First runner-up, and a close one at that, is Naviator, which is available on the Android market. It gives you a basic moving map, however, these are not seamless charts, so you'll have to select the chart that you're on. That's fine if you know what chart you should be on, but if you select the wrong one, you'll find yourself out in the middle of white space. However, there is a button just to recenter the airplane by GPS. There's a flexible split-screen function that does a two-thirds, one-third split. This is where you control what layers of information you want to put on the moving map chart. You can have METARs, AIRMETs, SIGMETs, TFRs, and other pieces of data. We found that the pinch to zoom function wasn't particularly reliable, but the buttons for zoom in and zoom out work just fine. Aviator also does a terrific job of giving you detailed information by tapping on the chart as it comes up in its own dedicated window. METARs are color-coded for ceiling and visibility separately, or you can get detailed information through the same pop-ups. Evolution doesn't have TFRs on the chart yet, but Naviator does, complete with details. Airport information is off the chart with a tap for the basic stuff, as well as an option to put runway extensions on the chart for just your landing runway or all of them. If you want more detailed airport information, then you press the same button, and Navigator will use the split screen function to give you all the frequencies, airport remarks, and this is also where you'll get instrument approach procedures. In flight, you get 
basic waypoint information in the four corners of the screen, as well as a compass rose and a predictor line for so many minutes into the future. Instrument procedures can be geo-referenced, and they can be shown in a portrait orientation with the basic waypoint information on that screen as well. Flight plans can be entered and edited on screen or typed in manually, but we found it more cumbersome than other apps. A Naviator doesn't understand Victor Airways. It's still a good deal at $5 a month or $50 a year. There's an additional $75 a year if you want the geo-referencing for the approach plates. Simple can be good, and that's what Open Flight GPS is about. It gives you sectionals, low and route charts, terminal area charts, and even VFR flyways, which is something we don't see in many of these apps. It'll give you WAC charts as well. If you want to view a chart, you can tap on it, choose north or south half, and it appears for you as a moving map connected to your GPS if you have it. When you get to the edge of one chart, the program's smart enough to load up the next one. These are again not continuous charts, but individual charts, although they do have the advantage that it means you can read the information that's down on the chart edges, which you can't do on a continuous one. Four buttons on the top let you load up the adjacent chart at a tap. Speaking of taps, you can tap the chart and punch down a waypoint. There's no real flight planning, but this lets you create a route so you can at least see your position on it as you travel along. One real disadvantage of Open Flight GPS is that you have to download each chart individually. Downloading the entire country can take a long time. But for a one-time fee of $30, it's not such a bad deal. There are other droid apps in the works. WingX should release one that matches its popular iPad version. And we got a sneak peek at Garmin's app that'll resemble Pilot MyCast, but have an as-yet-to-be-chosen new name. We also looked at two apps aimed primarily at European users, Pocket FMS and SkyMap. SkyMap had a cool feature in that it gave a terrain cross-section view at the top of the chart. However, for US users, only sectionals are available. In Europe, all charts are. We'll keep our eye on the moving maps for the droid and let you know about the new things that are out there, while you, well, remember to look outside sometimes. This is Jeff Van West for AvWeb. Thanks for watching.